All right, it's that time. Time to move on to virology. I'm sure you've been sitting at the edge of your seat waiting for this moment. I mean, who doesn't want to learn about the different viral envelopes and varying mechanisms of replication? All those details that you'll need every day for the rest of your career. That is, of course, if you plan on being a doctor in a post-apocalyptic world, trying to find a cure for a virus that's turning people into zombies. Well, even if you're not excited, maybe you should be. Though the material may be somewhat esoteric, we spent a lot of time making sure that our sketches will not only make learning viruses very manageable, but hopefully it'll even be mildly entertaining. Anyway, let's get started. We're going to start off by learning about the positive RNA viruses, beginning with the Picorna virus family. Because this group has several viruses that share common characteristics, we're going to start with an overview video. We're going to set the scene of the overview and all of the subsequent viruses within the Picorna family at this Picorna animal nursery, which is conveniently located in front of this large peak in Africa. Rather than just have it be at a zoo, we're making it an animal nursery because that way all the animals are accompanied by their pico, or small, counterparts. These small animals will be present in all of the subsequent Picorna videos, and they're just there to remind you that the virus is a member of the Picorna family. So, as I mentioned, picornavirus is an RNA virus. And just like our bacteria videos distinguish gram-positive and gram-negative through predominantly purple and red colors, our videos are going to distinguish RNA from DNA viruses with a similar color scheme. However, in this case, RNA viruses will be warm, bright colors, like yellow and orange, and DNA viruses will be cold, blue colors. And we'll be sure to make these coloring schemes glaringly obvious as it's pretty obvious in this scene that it's predominantly yellow and orange, or warm colors, so you should know that it's an RNA virus. When you see more, this should become second nature. Now, the RNA viruses have another dividing point. They can be either positive or negative sense, and I'll explain exactly what that means in a bit, but for now, I want to introduce our recurring theme to help you differentiate positive from negative. Positive sense RNA viruses will take place during the daytime, so negative sense, obviously, will take place at night. Although, admittedly, the yellow-orange color scheme makes this scene appear to take place at dusk, the sun is here, so it counts as daytime. You'll see that our negative sense RNA viruses are really obviously at night. Also, there wouldn't be guests at the zoo at night. So, since it's daytime, you now know that the Picorna virus family is a positive sense RNA virus. Alright, let's talk some more about some other general characteristics for the Picorna virus family. The picornaviruses are naked viruses, as in lacking a viral envelope. Our recurring symbol for naked viruses will be this, the Statue of David, who is very clearly naked. Not sure a naked statue is appropriate for the little kids who come to the sanctuary, but luckily there's a well-placed balloon. So expect to see the Statue of David popping up in a bunch of other virus videos. Now, how is this virus transmitted? Picornaviruses are, for the most part, transmitted through the fecal-oral route, as in the virus is shed in feces, which ends up in the food and water, or on hands of dirty little children, and then gets introduced into the mouth. To illustrate fecal-oral transmission, we're going to draw this pile of poop here, and here, and here, and here. Need I say more? The exception to this is the rhinovirus, which is transmitted through the respiratory system. I'll discuss this in the rhinovirus video. All right, now that the viruses are inside the body, what happens? You need to know a little bit about how the virus replicates. Positive sense RNA replication is really easy. The viral RNA is already structured like mRNA, so it just uses the host RNA polymerase to get translated. We decided to illustrate this concept with those ubiquitous coin stamping machines that are present at all major attractions, which we'll draw here on the left bottom corner. Now let me explain why we chose the coin stamping analogy. In positive sense viruses, since the viral RNA is the same sense as that host cell mRNA, and hence can be translated to proteins directly by the host cell RNA polymerase, the virus can use entirely the host cell's machinery to translate its RNA to proteins. So with this analogy, think of the coin as the viral RNA and the machine itself as the host. All you do is insert the coin and you receive an output of another coin. All of the machinery that's needed to process the coin exists within the coin stamping machine, or the host cell. Negative sense RNA, on the other hand, needs to bring along its own viral RNA polymerase. 
the coin machine works as a representation of positive sense because you obviously don't need to add any machinery to the coin stamper when you put in a coin. So this mechanism is true for all positive sense RNA viruses. But since this is the first positive sense, we're only going to really explain it in this video. So now on to the next step in replication. The viral RNA is translated into a long polyprotein product, which, when uncleaved, can't serve any function. However, the virus contains viral proteases that cleave the product into the active viral protein subunits. This can be seen here demonstrated at the ticket booth. The tickets start out being connected, but as you can see, they are breaking up towards the end. This signifies that the picornaviruses create a large polyprotein product that needs to be cleaved into smaller subunits. Finally, you'll also have to differentiate viruses that replicate in the cytoplasm from viruses that replicate primarily in the nucleus. For positive sense, this is also very easy to remember. All RNA positives replicate outside of the nucleus in the cytoplasm, which makes sense intuitively since host cell mRNA, which is analogous to the viral RNA, is all processed in the cytoplasm. Almost all RNA negatives are also in the cytoplasm, with an exception we'll discuss later. Since it's by far more common to replicate in the cytoplasm, we decided that rather than illustrating this every time, we'd only illustrate the exceptions, which is when it's translated in the nucleus. Alright, enough about replication. Let's talk about which viruses are actually members of the picornavirus family. For simplicity and organization, we've divided our sanctuary into three main attractions to represent the three main subgroups within the family. First, you can see our hepatitis A hippos up here on the left. Then you can enter the aviary, which represents enteroviruses, here in the center. And on the right, we have our rhino, which, as you probably guessed it, is for a rhinovirus. We'll delve more into each of these in their individual videos, but let's do a quick overview, starting with hepatitis A. You're going to have to know five main types of hepatitis, and you need to remember that hepatitis A is a picornavirus. In order to help you with that, we've labeled the hippo's arm with an A tag. And these big mud spots on the hippos are shaped like a liver and spleen to help you remember that hepatitis causes hepatosplenomegaly. Pretty obvious. Okay, moving on to our aviary. The sign saying enter is to remind you that this group is considered the enteroviruses, which includes poliovirus, represented by our flamingos, and our Coxsackie A and Coxsackie B cockatoos. And finally, these mockingbirds that echo one another represent echovirus. There are actually hundreds more, but these are the ones we focused on. And of course, we'll have individual videos explaining each of these viruses, so we won't go into too much details right now. One thing I do want to talk about is why the aviary is shaped like a head. As a whole, enteroviruses are the number one cause of aseptic meningitis, meaning meningitis caused from a non-bacterial organism. You can see that the sign posted in front of the aviary says 100% aseptic inside. I guess having a sterile breeding ground is clearly important for birds. Now we'll add some bags of food that are scattered around the aviary. On exams, you may be given a printout of different CSF findings, and you'll be asked to differentiate whether it's bacterial, viral, or fungal. So these bags of food will help you remember the CSF findings of a viral meningitis. So the first bag says the food has no sugar added, which means that glucose levels in the CSF will be normal. It also says there are no organisms in the food, which means that the CSF is aseptic, or without bacteria. And finally, our food bags are a good source of protein, which means that protein levels will be elevated. We've also added a child wearing a space helmet, pointing a laser gun at the birds. And this should be a knee-jerk reaction for you by now, but this is our recurring symbol for meningitis. This illustrates how young children are particularly susceptible to viral meningitis caused by enteroviruses. And finally, we have our rhinos, which represent rhinovirus. Rhinovirus is the primary cause of the common cold. And once again, we'll go into more detail in the rhinovirus video, but one notable difference for the rhinovirus is that it isn't transmitted fecal-orally. It's actually a respiratory transmission, 
which makes sense since it's a common cold and is a respiratory infection. We've drawn mud on the rhino's faces to symbolize a runny nose, signifying that it causes a URI. So really this overview is just to remind you of some general characteristics of picornavirus and to make sure you remember all the different types of picornaviruses that you'll be tested on. Just a little helpful tip so that you can remember these exhibits. Think of them as exhibits A, B, and C. Exhibit A for hepatitis A, hippo, so that way you really remember which hepatitis it is. Exhibit B is birds, which of course are enteroviruses. And exhibit C is the common cold rhinos. All right, now that we're done with our overview video, let's go into more detail with each of the members of the picornavirus family.